I'm Chris Story, and this is Alaska Real Estate. Brought to you courtesy of the Alaska Association of Realtors and made possible in part thanks to the amazing team at Alaska Housing Finance Corporation. Alaska Housing's been there for you in good times and not so good times. AHFC's your partner in Alaska Real Estate. They offer free education for you and your buyers. Terrific home loans, renovation programs, and remember, stay up to speed on that rebate program at akrebate.com. Dot com. Alaska Housing Finance Corporation, thank you. They're online, ahfc.us. Today on Alaska Real Estate Podcast, Valley Board President Dodie Kettler, her year in review. Plus, will she reveal juicy details about Don McKenzie at the Journey concert in San Francisco? And a special presentation of book notes brought to you by Alaska USA Title Agency. An author who became friends with Margaret Thatcher is now proposing America merge with Canada. Yep, you'll meet Diane Francis right here on Alaska Real Estate. Dodie, let's wrap up. So 2013 is coming to a close, as is your presidency. Uh, how did it, you know, what did you accomplish everything you wanted, the goals you set out as a board, everything go as, as smoothly as expected? Well, after a rocky start at the beginning of the year, yes, everything went great. We had a fantastic board who worked really hard. We started a new strategic plan, and as we're reviewing that strategic plan, We saw that almost everything we uh, had in that plan we were able to accomplish, including renting out our room and a VBR-sponsored tour, which is just kind of taking off. And um, we have even more things planned for December, including an affiliation affiliate appreciation night and all sorts of wonderful things. Was that an update? I'm curious. Was that an update to an existing strategic plan, or was that, okay, starting from scratch? It was a strategic plan that hadn't been uh, worked for uh, about seven years when we still had an MLS. So we took that and we got some wonderful wisdom from some uh, prior board members and basically pieced that apart and came up with our new strategic plan. Excellent. And that will live on and serve uh, future boards. So that's great. hope so. Yeah. And a terrific uh, presence at the convention this year. Yeah, we had, uh, you know, putting on the state convention was a lot of work, but boy, Janice and Patty did a phenomenal job, lots of support from affiliates and uh, members here, and I think it was one of our best attended conventions in years, something like 220 people, I think. Very, very well attended, and I'll tell you what else, just a big thank you um, from myself personally. I learned a lot, a tremendous uh, amount of education, and that now, Dodie, just so you know, is when we'll cue the national anthem and go. Oh, Okay, so we we'll, we just edited in the national anthem, by the way. That was a great job. You did a you did a phenomenal job. Thank you. Yeah, and Jack, uh, Jack, Coach Mendenhall, Jackie Mendenhall, she was great. Just a r- really good time. I sure enjoyed it. He's always the best. Well, what uh, so what's going on? You got uh, just a couple months left here before the year wraps up. You guys have some big fundraisers or Christmas parties coming up. No, we um, we just got through with our local convention. It was fantastic. It was really well attended, too. Um, we had the most at our membership meeting um, at elections that we have had in many years. We had almost all of the board positions were running um, with opposition and even from the floor. So we had people competing for board positions this year, which was just amazing to see and all highly qualified. Next year's board is going to be tremendous. Our convention was just a hoot. We had it at the bowling alley. We had bowling teams and competitions. Um, Devin Thomas, our Realtor of the Year, and Christy Irwin, our Affiliate of the Year, were awarded their prizes. Our new board was recognized. And the last thing we have is one more meeting and our Affiliate Appreciation slash Christmas party that's coming up, and and I'll be done. (laughs) Good for you. Tell me a little bit about the market, the overall, the, the Valley market. Did you guys... Uh, experience any surprises this year or steady as she goes? 
It was steady. We had a surge that ended a little sooner than I think anybody was expecting. So um, we we kind of surged and wondered if we would ride the surge, and then we kind of leveled out. Um, so still pending properties. You know, obviously properties are going to start slowing down here. Things are coming off the market for the winter, but still have plenty of properties out there, uh, less competition for sellers, and still plenty to choose from for buyers. And days on market are increasing a little bit right now. That's typical, um, but prices are up just a little bit, and that's where we want them. So. All right. Hoping, uh, hoping for good things around the state uh, for real estate next year as well. Tell us a little bit about your experience in San Francisco. You participated in the National Association of Realtors Conference and Expo. How, how did it go? It was great. Um, it was informative. Um, I attended some risk management com- because I'm on the risk management committee, so I attended that forum, the the. Um, roundtable forums for president elects and presidents of boards and comparing small boards and what we offer and what we don't offer and how we can make things better and how we can help them are always fantastic times we actually had myself soon to be past president Devin president next year and Sue Ellen president elect all attend those together we had a planning time with the three of us and so those were very valuable um, the general session uh, was Hillary Clinton, and that was um, very interesting. Foreigner was phenomenal. It was a great concert. I was gonna. I didn't want to. I didn't want to go there immediately, but I was gonna ask how was the concert. It was fun, um, and then you know we had some fairly simple voting. We voted on uh, emeritus status for realtors over 40 years, and that's going to have a new update. So we'll be awarding some emeritus status to realtors here in the state. Um, if you've been a member of NAR for 40 years or more. And um, just some simple bylaws and, and a few little changes with NAR, but nothing major. Um, so everything everything seemed to go good. The expo was massive. I think 400 vendors, the biggest expo I'd ever been to. Wow, terrific. Uh, briefly, tell us about what, what did Hillary Clinton present about. I was curious. I'd seen some pictures of her at the presentation, but I, I really wasn't sure as to the content of her message. What was she speaking in regards to? Her message was in regards to um, homeowners' rights and uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and uh, the Federal Housing Authority. So uh, basically, you know, letting us know she's there, um, she hears us, that Congress hears us, and that um, she's all for, you know, homeowners' rights. It's, you know, politically correct as she could present that, obviously. Um, but it was she actually is a really wonderful speaker, and I think it was enjoyable to everyone that was there. She, uh, you know, they asked her if she was running for president and really wanted to find out if she'd answer that to the National Association of Realtors, but she would not. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. No no surprises there, I guess. And and is there anything you need to tell us about? Did anybody did anybody step out of line? This is confession time. Is there did somebody embarrass us all at, at the uh, the concert? Any any good juicy details? Oh, Chris, you haven't paid me enough. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Man, I was really hoping that uh, there was a photograph of Don McKenzie without a shirt on and uh, like an uber foreigner fan or something. <laughs> well, uh, that's, no. what, that's what Photoshop's for, not to worry. All right, uh, Dodie, thank you so much. Congratulations on a, a year nearly complete, and uh, we'll look forward to our next conversation. All right, thanks, Chris. Time for Book Notes, brought to you by Alaska USA Title Agency. Crystal and her statewide team of title professionals are here for you and your clients online at akusatitle.com. You'll appreciate the quality of service, the passion for what they do for you and your clients. Find out why so many people all over the state are choosing Alaska USA Title Agency. akusatitleagency.com. Diane Francis, tell tell me a little bit about yourself. Where where are you from, and uh, and where do you live these days? Well, I'm I'm originally from Chicago. I was born and raised in Chicago. I married a guy. We went to Canada. Uh, he was Canadian British, and uh, we went up to Toronto, and had kids and a life, and built businesses and did very well. So I am a dual citizen of the United States and Canada. I pay taxes, vote work and live in both countries. I love both countries. I've dedicated the book to both. And uh, so I'm I'm a merger myself. 
<laughs> the ultimate merger. And I'm a, I'm a businesswoman, a business professor, and I'm a business writer. You've interviewed from, gosh, Margaret Thatcher, Ronald Reagan. What, what, uh, where did you start your career, and what led you to, to meeting and interviewing such uh, amazing people? Well, I, uh, I'm a self-taught journo. I was good at English in high school. I w thought I would like to be a novelist. When we immigrated to Canada, I was only 19. We started an art studio. I became a graphic designer with my ex-husband. So I got into business, and then I got involved when my kids were little in, in politics as a, like a local political activist. And some of my friends who I'd gotten helped elected said to me, hey, it's your turn. Where do you want to be? Do you want to run for city council or school board? And I said, you know what? The power, the power to change the world and influence events is not in the office, it's in the media. So I went to a community college, I took a couple of weeks night school, the guy said, you don't need this, there's a job at this little newspaper, and I think you should go for it, and they gave me a job. So that's really, it's all self-taught and very lucky. What advice would you give somebody that's, they're at the precipice of what you just described, of making a leap into, into writing or journalism or following their path some way? What, what, uh, what gave you the confidence to go for it? Let me tell you what I've realized in the five years since I've written my last book is how hollowed out the media has become. There are no book reviewers and medium and small newspapers anymore. Uh, people are overworked and underpaid. The Washington Post, the Toronto Star, the, even the New York Times, they're down to a skeleton staff because they're fighting for survival against the blogosphere and the Internet. And so it's not a real great journalism itself. It's not a real great career to hang your head on. But learning how to write is because it teaches you and forces you to think clearly, speak clearly, and write clearly. And that is extremely marketable. It's marketable in terms of government relations, public relations, and advertising, but it's also marketable because it gives you a skill set to think through things carefully and to cut through the nonsense. And so it helps you be a better decision maker if you master it. Not everybody does. The name of the book is Merger of the Century. I'm talking, of course, to Diane Francis, the author, Why Canada and America Should Become one country. Before we delve into the book, and I want to, I've got to ask you, what was it like uh, speaking or interviewing Ronald Reagan? What, what was that like? This was when Reagan was actually, before he was the nominee, and uh, just after he'd left the governorship, he was a life force. I mean, he comes from Illinois, which is where I come from. He was a sports broadcaster, good-looking guy. You know, he, he made everything look easy because he was just so talented. And so darn personable, great sense of humor. I'm not saying he didn't take things seriously, but he had a lovely distance in life, which is probably why he lived a long, healthy life and, um, and did so well, because he just didn't get all caught up in stuff, didn't have an easy childhood. We talked about the stepfathers, like Clinton, uh, single-parent mom, alcoholism, overcame all of that and then some and so you know real interesting guy loved him margaret thatcher i had a special affection for she liked me i introduced her once on a platform in toronto she said that's the best introduction anyone's ever given me would you like to come back after to the green room and have some scotch with me <laughs> i hate scotch but i loved her so we had a scotch and then she invited me every time open invitation Every time I was in London, and I was the editor-in-chief of the paper, so I was going to Europe a fair amount because the communist system was collapsing. It was a great story, and I'd always have tea with her and Dennis. I just watched The Iron Lady the other day, so this is uh, ringing very, very real life to me. So, well, that's terrific. All right, I've got to ask you, so the book, again, is Merger of the Century, and what is the typical reaction, if, you, if there is one, or you could describe it, what would be the typical reaction you've received thus far from an American and then contrast that to an average Canadian. <laughs> Question. Well, in both cases, it's shock. Yeah. What? Are you real? Are you for real? Um, with the Americans, I've found it's wow. They sort of gasp and they say, "Wow, what a neat idea!" Because Americans all like Canada because they don't know much about Canada. Not that if they knew more about Canada, they dislike Canada, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, it's, wow, and then about half of them will say, but why would they want to be part of our mess? <laughs> so that's very interesting. And then I have my answer, and I say, well, if we joined forces with you, and that's a big if, we'd be 35 million Democrats. There'd never be a log jam in Washington again. <laughs> <laughs> so they laugh. Um, 
In Canada, it's shock and horror for the most part. Uh, people are, well, wait a minute. And that that's like, no way. And the knee-jerk reaction is, no way, no how. They'll eat us alive. We'll disappear. We think we have something important here. And on and on. This is exactly the same reaction. The benefit of being older is that I was around as a reporter and editor in the 80s when free trade with the Americans was first suggested by a very prominent liberal cabinet minister who had been appointed to study what Canada should do and said the only hope for Canada economically is to do free trade with the Americans. He was thrown under the bus, and I saw that happen. And two years later, the deal was signed. The free trade agreement was 87. That was Canada, the U.S. only. Mexico said, me too. Right. And then they signed on in 94, and that is the specific reason why Canada and the U.S. aren't in a situation like the Europeans where there's no border between us and we're much more integrated. Mexico's a problem. You, you really think that we could be more secure with, uh, with open borders between Canada and America? I mean, that's, that, that you make that case that, that we could, it could add security. Stay tuned to Alaska Real Estate Podcast for part two of my interview with Diane Francis. Well, that's it for this edition of Alaska Real Estate Podcast. Sandy Ehrenman's your executive producer. For all of us here at Alaska Real Estate, I'm Chris Story, wishing you health, wealth, and prosperity.